Welcome back to our November theory lesson. In this lesson, we're going to start to look at elements of rhythm. This topic will last us November and December. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So this, these couple lessons are going to focus on the time aspect of music. That's how sounds are notated so that they will occur at a predictable moment and in a predetermined pattern. Rhythm is a general term used to refer to the time aspect of music as contrasted with the pitch aspect. So when it comes to showing how long to hold notes for, or rests, we use durational symbols. Durations are noted by using symbols that are organized so that each symbol is twice the duration of the next shorter symbol and half the duration of the next longer sim symbol. The table here lists a number of these symbols. So generally in concert band, we don't worry about a brev. Um, we can start, although knowing that a brev is equal to two whole notes, it's sort of like a squared whole note, is a good thing to know. So we can see that our whole note or our whole rest is worth two half notes or half rests. Our half note is worth two quarter notes. Our quarter note is worth two eighths. Our eighth is worth two sixteenths. Our sixteenths are worth two thirty seconds. The same series could be continued to thirty seconds, sixty fourths, and so on. Durations other than these must be indicated through the use of ties, dots, or other symbols. A tie is a curved line that connects two notes of the same pitch, creating a new duration that is equal to their sum. A dot always adds to the duration one half the value of the note, rest, or dot that precedes it. So for example, a dotted quarter note is equal to a quarter note tied to an eighth note. If you had a double dotted quarter note, so the first dot gives half the value of the note, and then the second dot gives half the value of the first dot. So you can see that it is equal to a quarter note plus an eighth note plus a sixteenth note. When notated on the staff, a dot is never placed on the line. If the note head itself is on a staff line, the dot is put to the right of the note, but in the space above it. Beat and tempo. The beat is the basic pulse of a musical passage. To determine the beat of a passage you're listening to, tap your foot to the music or try to imagine the way a conductor would conduct the passage. That's the conductor's arm movement. The resulting steady pulse is called a beat, and the rate at which the beat occurs is called a tempo. A composer commonly specifies the tempo of a passage by one of two methods, or sometimes by both. The first method uses words often in Italian, to describe tempo. So here we see a number of different tempo markings. First we see the Italian words, which are the most common way that we see them in music. Then we have their English translations. Beside them we also have German and French words because if music was made in Germany, oftentimes the instructions are in German. Or if it was French in French. Italy, German, and Germany, and France is really sort of the center of the musical world in Europe. So that's why those are our three main languages. The second method is more exact because it shows precisely how many beats are to occur in the space of one minute. For example, if the desired tempo would result in 72 quarter notes in one minute, 
the tempo would be indicated like this, saying that the quarter note equals 72. Or sometimes it's notated as MM quarter note equals 72. And the MM stands for Melzel's metronome after Johannes Melzel, who widely promoted the device during the 19th century. Meter. Beats tend to be grouped into patterns that are consistent throughout a passage. The pattern of beats is called the meter. Groups of two, three, and four beats are the most common, although other meters occur. Incidentally, a group of four beats could often also be interpreted as, interpreted as two groups of two beats each, and vice versa. In any case, the groups of beats are called measures. We abbreviate them as a lowercase m period or two lowercase m's in period. And in notation, the end of a measure is always indicated by a vertical line through the staff called a bar line. The words duple, triple, and quadruple are used to refer to the number of beats in each measure. So we have duple meter, triple meter, and quadruple meter. These terms are summarized here, along with the pattern of stresses usually found in each meter. So if you have a grouping of two beats, that would be duple, as in like double, and you would go strong, weak, one, two, one, two, strong, weak. Marches are like that, left, right left, right. It's not left, right, left, but left, right, left, right. A three beat measure is in triple meter. Triple, pretty self-explanatory. In this case, our stresses go strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak. This is exemplified in waltzes, which I'm sure you've heard where you do, do, Four beat measures, which are probably most common for us in concert band, are said to be in quadruple meter because there are quad four beats. Their structure is a little bit different. So it starts off the same as two, but our third beat is kind of like a secondary stress beat. So we have Strong, weak, strong, weak. Strong, weak, less strong, weak. Strong, weak, less strong, weak. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. As you might imagine, most marches are in duple meter because people have two feet, whereas contemporary popular music tends to be in duple or quadruple. Waltzes are always in triple meter, as are a number of traditional songs, such as Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, or are you going to Scarborough Fair? The meter of many passages is clear and easily identified, but in all other cases, the meter might be ambiguous. For example, the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Quite, if you sing that quite slowly while you tap your foot or conduct, then you can decide the meter type. Take me out to the ball game. Now sing it again, but very fast. Take me out to the ball game. The first time you probably felt the meter as triple, but at a fast, faster temper, you should have identified the meter as duple. So that is take me out to the ball game or take, take, me out to the ball game. A little bit different. 
Between those extreme tempos are more moderate tempos, which two listeners might interpret in both different ways, one hearing a faster triple meter and the other a slower duple meter. Both listeners would be correct, but identifying the meter in a case such as this is a matter of interpretation rather than right and wrong. So, at this time, can you please complete assignment 2-1? You may want to look up how the songs they ask you to guess whether they're in triple or duple meter are if you don't know them. Continuing on to the division of the beat. In most musical passages, we hear durations that are shorter than the beat. We call these shorter durations divisions of the beat. Beats generally divide either into two equal parts, called simple time, or into three equal parts, called compound time. We carefully Be careful not to confuse beat type, which refers to how the beat divides simple or compound, with meter type, which refers to how the measure divides, duple, triple, or quadruple. The common beat and measure types can be combined with each other in six possible ways, as we see here. So, we can have simple duple time. So that tells us that with duple time, there's two beats in a bar, and that the beat gets divided into two. So in this case, it would be something like one and two and one and two and one and two and. Triple simple would be three divided into one and two and three and one and two and three and. In simple quadruple, same once again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Compound is where it gets a little bit tricky because instead of one and two and, we're going one and a two and a three and a. So compound duple, there's six small beats that get grouped into two. One and a two and a one and a two and a. Triple. Same thing, one and a two and a three and a, one and a two and a three and a. Quadruple the same, one and a two and a three and a four and a. For an example, let's think of that song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, quickly in duple meter. Duple meter. So that's the one, one, two, three, one, two, three, take me out to the ball game, as we've previously done. You can hear that the beats divide into thirds. So this is an example of compound duple. So it's kind of like one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Now, do the same thing with the song from Jesus Christ Superstar, I Don't Know How to Love Him. I don't know how to love him. I don't know how to love him. And you'll find that it is simple duple or simple quadruple. I don't know how to love him. There's not that triplet feel that we have felt previously. At this time, please move on to checkpoint one and assignment two two. Once again, if you don't know the songs that they're referring to, feel free to look them up on YouTube. Simple time signatures. 
A time signature is a symbol that tells the performer how many beats will occur in each measure, what note value will represent the beat, and whether the beat is simple or compound. A time signature for a simple beat has two, three, or four as the top number, indicating two, three, or four beats in a bar. The top number indicates the number of beats in the measure, and the bottom number indicates the beat note. So when we see a two, if you make that a fraction, it becomes a half, so it's a half note. If you see a four, make it a fraction, it's a quarter note. Eighth, make it a fraction, it's an eighth note, and so on. Here in this table are some typical simple time signatures. So we see 2-4, that tells us that there are two quarter notes in the bar. When we see 2-2, two, two, that tells us there are two half notes in a bar. When we see 3-16, that tells us there are three sixteenth notes in a bar. 3-4, three, three quarter notes in a bar. 4-8, bar. Four, eight, four eighth notes in a bar. 4-4, four, four, or common time, four quarter notes in a bar. Let's take a quick second to look at this example here that illustrates how some of the songs we've been considering might be notated. The beat values were chosen arbitrarily. Jingle bells, for example, could be noted, notated correctly in 2-2 two, two, or 2-8 two, or any other simple duple time signature. So here is Jingle Bells in 2-4. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. Or here is America the Beautiful in eighth notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or home on the range in half notes. One, two, three, 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 one, two. With that, we've come to the end of this month's theory lesson. Please complete assignment 2-3 and then make sure to hand in your theory assignment for the month. In December, we're going to continue on with co compound time signatures, after which we'll move on to summarizing our time signatures and talking about other durational symbols as well. So come on back next week and we'll continue to talk about rhythm and pulse and beat. See you then. Bye-bye.